Welcome to RF Stuff. In this video we're going to be going over the basic calibration of a network analyzer. I have an HP slash Agilent slash Keysight 8720ET network analyzer in front of me. The 8720 series is a very commonly used network analyzer in the microwave industry. Uh, it's one of the old school kind of workhorses of the game. This one is set up uh, as a transmission reflection amp network analyzer. It operates up to 20 gigs, but what it what the transmission reflection setup is uh, is that it's only set up, it's only uh, configured to measure uh, transmission in this direction, which means it will perform an S21 measurement but not an S12 measurement. So it can measure the gain this way, but not the gain uh, in the reverse direction. Other uh, different or differently configured network analyzers, uh, which we'll show in other videos, have the ability to measure uh, both S11, S22, uh, S12, and S21 uh, all in sequence, which is pretty neat. And we'll go over that in another video. The other equipment we're going to need to perform this calibration, which is called Open Short Load Through, or OSLT for short, is an Open Short Load Calibration Kit. I have one right here, and it consists of an RF Open when screwed to the SMA male connector. This SMA female adapter simulates an open circuit on the RF. A short, which when connected to the SMA male, the center conductor is grounded to the outer casing, so it simulates a short circuit. And a broadband RF load. This is a specially made load that will read a 50 ohm impedance across a broadband. Now, as I said before, this is a basic calibration. Um, it's probably going to be valid for frequencies below 5 gigahertz. Um, because for any very broadband, very high frequency measurements, you're going to need a, 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 a very well calibrated kit. Uh, that we can uh, cover in another video. Um, right now, below 5 gigs, the measurement uh, certainty or uncertainty between this whole setup and the quality of this calibration kit, I would just estimate to be probably around a couple tenths to a half dB. If you're seeking very, very accurate uh, on-the-nose measurements, especially at the higher frequencies, a uh, very different calibration procedure is needed, which we can go into in another video. Like I said, this is for basic uh, cal, where you're going to measure something simple like a lower frequency filter, amp below a couple gigahertz, or something of that nature. And the last two pieces of gear you'll need for this cal are SMA wrench, and an SMA female to female through. So to initiate the cal, I've zoomed in on the screen a little bit so that we can see the commands that are going to be put into the network analyzer. Now, this calibration procedure, the open short load through, is common to more or less any vector network analyzer you're going to use. Uh, this is the manual calibration uh, you know, tutorial. There are other newer, more advanced analyzers that will have a cal box, uh, an eCal box, eCal module that they're called, that will connect in between your two ports and automatically switch through uh, very well calibrated open short loads and throughs and they'll actually connect to the network analyzer and the network analyzer will have uh, extra coefficients 
built in there and actually communicate with that uh, Cal module to perform a very um, accurate calibration. But as I mentioned before, this is the kind of basic uh, 101 version of the calibration. What I'm going to do first is set up my display. I will set up my display by going to the dual channel uh, display mode. Guys that make amps like the dual channel display where the S11 measurement and the S21, so the ref input reflection or input return loss measurement and the gain measurement are on two separate uh, channel uh, plots. Uh, guys that make filters like to see a single channel uh, displayed with both the S11 and S21 lines embedded or overlaid on top of each other. Uh, we'll go into, when we go into filter measurements, we'll talk about why uh, that's uh, easier to look at from a filter uh, measurement perspective. So to kick off the cal, we're going to set our start and stop frequencies. Right now I've set it to 50 megahertz start, four gig stop. These are just arbitrary settings right now, just for the purposes of the demo. And I've set a couple markers here. I've set a marker at 55, I've set a marker at two gigs, and a marker at 3.75 gigs. Again, arbitrary choices. There are another couple markers available uh, on this uh, piece of equipment and on many others, there's a multitude of markers available. I like to set it up to see kind of what's going on on the low, mid, high end, just for rough uh, measurements. Most network analyzers have uh, an active channel button, which is right up here, which will allow you to pick the, uh, you know, whether you're manipulating channel one, which is the S11 input return loss measurements or the S21 gain measurements. Uh, so right now we're going to calibrate the uh, input return loss or the S11 measurement uh, of the network analyzer. So to calibrate the input reflection channel, we are going to select channel one, go to the calibration menu, and select the reflection one port menu item. It's going to give us three prompts here. We're gonna connect an open, a short, and a load here. And every time we connect it, we're going to press the key to tell it uh, what one we've connected. Now we'll start with the open. I've got the open right here. Useful tip, uh, when you're screwing on an SMA, always screw the male end on. I'll explain that at the end of the video, why that is so important and can get you out of trouble in the lab. So we've hooked up our open. I'm going to press the open button. Now it has uh, taken a bunch of reference measurements and now it knows what an open looks like on this port. I will do the, this, I'll follow the same procedure with the short. As you can see, the sweep is pretty quick. It makes these, uh, computes these coefficients rather quickly. And what it's doing, it is saving in its memory with respect to this cable, these connectors, up to this reference plane, what an open, short, and a 50 ohm load are supposed to look like from 50 megs to four gigs. Because we're telling it, we're giving it known uh, open shorts and loads. So now we're at the load stage and we have, uh, it asks us what kind of load we're using and right now we're using a broadband load. It gives you the option to connect a sliding or a low band load to further fine tune the calibration. For our purposes, we're not going to do that uh, set right now. So now it asks us if we're done. 
it's going to compute the calc coefficients. Now what's happened now, we still have the 50 ohm load connected and marker 1, marker 2, and marker 3 are all showing very very low return losses or very very low reflection coefficients or very very good return losses. That is because all of the input stimulus is getting absorbed by the load and it's saying there's a good 50 ohms hooked up to this input port. So you can assume that a, the cal on the, the, the port 1 went pretty well. And if you disconnect the 50 ohm load and now we're running into an open, you'll see our return loss is basically zero. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's an open circuit. Now to continue our calibration, we're going to switch to channel two and we're going to go to the calibrate cal menu again and select response. What we're going to calibrate now is we're going to connect the input and output ports with the through and it is going to send a stimulus from port 1 to port 2 and see what a measure what a through looks like with respect to this test setup. So I'm connecting now the SMA through and I will just hit the through button. It's going to measure and then it is showing us now our response line with this through connected as zero dB a loss. So it's calibrated through the input to output uh, as, as, as we've connected it. And once I disconnect port one from port two here, you can see that we're reading a very, very low, uh, very, very high level of loss from port one to point port two because they're not connected. Negative 90, negative 80 dB. We're at we're at the limits to where uh, this piece of equipment can uh, pick up RF signals. So that is a basic uh, calibration procedure for a network analyzer. Again, it's uh, more or less universal to most uh, makes and models. Uh, in the next video, we'll go over some more advanced techniques and some measurements.